Is relying solely on data from published studies a suboptimal strategy for optimal health? To illustrate what I mean by that, let's have a look at red blood cells. In particular, the reference range as defined by LabCorp, which is 4.14 to 5.8 million red blood cells per microliter of blood. So with the goal of optimizing health and longevity, should red blood cells be low, mid-range, or high? Let's have a look at how red blood cells change during aging to try to answer that question. So starting in youth, we can see that the data for men in green and for women in blue, that red blood cells decline during aging for both men and women. So starting with the data for men, we can see that clear decline with the green line. And then for the women, the data is a little bit more variable with a decline in red blood, uh, red blood cells uh, and then an increase up until about 55 years old, after which red blood cells uh, consistently decline up until 95 years old. So when considering these data, this suggests that having relatively higher levels of red blood cells is youthful. So with that in mind, is the higher end of the reference range for red blood cells optimal for health and longevity? So to try to answer that question, let's have a look at my own red blood cell data since 2008. And I've blood tested 36 times over that time span, so the last 13 years. And uh, from 2008 to 2013, I was measuring about once a year, so uh, annually at my yearly physical, and I wasn't tracking my diet at all. And my average red blood cell level during those six measurements was 4.96. So when then going back to the data on the left, we can see that I'm uh, higher than the, uh, than the green line, which uh, based, based on having relatively higher levels of red blood cells in youth, one would expect that that should be okay or, or good. And then in 2015, I started tracking my diet, including weighing all my food, uh, entering that data into chronometer, and then putting all that data into an Excel file so, I could start, so that I could start to look at correlations between my diet with these biomarkers. And during that uh, four year span from 2015 to 2019, I blood tested 17 times and my average red blood cell level during that, those 17 tests was 4.62. So then when going back to the curve, or actually before we go back to the curve, so note that these two groups of data from 2008 to 2013 versus the 17 blood tests from 2015 to 2019 are significantly different when using a two sample t-test. So now going over to the curve back on the left, now we can see I'm on the aging curve, which yeah, is bad news. Uh, I'm not trying to be uh, have red blood cell levels that are characteristic of my chronological age. I want to have red blood cell levels that are characteristic of youth and to keep them there for as long as I, as I can. So because I track my diet, I can uh, make it, do interventions changing various things in my diet to try to improve these biomarkers. And I had success with that, as we can see over the last 13 measurements from later in 2019 to my last blood test in November of 2021, uh, we can see that my average red blood cell count is 5.1. So now going back to the curve on the left, we can see that uh, I'm, I'm back higher than the curve. And when compared with my data from 2008 to 2013, uh, the recent data, 5.1, is actually significantly higher when compared with the 4.96 for my first six, six, uh, six measurements. And also note that from the 2015 to 2019 data, those 17 blood tests, when compared with my last 13 blood tests, I was able to significantly increase those red blood cells when using a two-sample uh, two sample t-test to evaluate statistical significance. So the assumption is that having relatively higher red blood cells is optimal as they decline during aging. But is that true? Is my 5.1 value for red blood cells too high? So to help answer that question, evaluating correlations for red blood cells with other systemic biomarkers can help discern what's optimal. So what are these systemic biomarkers, uh, which I, I've referred to in recent videos as these bi the big picture biomarkers? And that's what's shown here. There are 23 of them. Usually there are 24, including red blood cells. But because I'm going to uh, look for correlations between red blood cells with these biomarkers, obviously red blood cells, you can't correlate them with themselves. So just running through this real quick as I've presented them in other videos, what do these big picture uh, biomarkers include? They include uh, glu uh, glucose and homocysteine, and then three markers of kidney function, four markers of liver function, all the major lipoproteins, all of the major immune cells and platelets, red blood cell related metrics like the mean corpuscular volume, so the average volume in a red blood cell, uh, the red blood cell distribution width, RDW, a marker of inflammation, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and then the overall biological age score as indicated by Morgan Levine's PhenoAge and the aging.ai. So also note that the uh, little n next to each biomarker is how many blood tests that I have for each, uh, each biomarker. 
And then uh, R is little r on the top left column is the correlation coefficient. And then the p-value is the measure for evaluating statistical significance, which in this case is a p-value less than 0.05. And note that this is blood test data from August of 2015 through my last blood test in November. So when comparing correlations for red blood cells with all these biomarkers, 11 of them have a p-value less than 0.05, so 11 significant correlations. So then the next question becomes, are these significant correlations going in the right or wrong direction in terms of aging and all-cause mortality risk? And then that approach can help to identify what red blood cell amount may be optimal for me rather than relying solely on the published studies and the reference range. Now there are three uh, scenarios that are possible here. So if red blood cells are significantly correlated with more biomarkers going in the right direction than wrong, this would suggest that red blood cells higher than my 13-year average, 4.85, may be optimal. Conversely, if red blood cells are significantly correlated with more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right, this would suggest that red blood cell levels lower than my 13-year average may be optimal. And last, if red blood cells are significantly correlated with the same amount of biomarkers going in the right direction as wrong, this would suggest that my average, my 13-year average red blood cell value may be optimal. So let's see how that, how that goes. So let's start at the top of the list with glucose, uh, and this should be relatively straightforward, and I'm going to try to uh, go through each of these relatively quickly as I've presented this data in many other videos. So uh, glucose levels increase during aging, as shown here, and I'm only going to focus on the data for men as that specifically applies to me. So the, as you can see by the black line, glucose levels increase during aging. And then in terms of all-cause mortality risk, which is shown there on the right, we can see that relatively higher levels of glucose are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So when considering that red blood cells, higher red blood cells are correlated with higher glucose, that's a significant correlation in my data, that uh, black arrow can be changed to a red arrow, indicative of going in the wrong direction. All right, so next up on the list is blood urea nitrogen, BUN. So blood urea nitrogen increases during aging, as shown there by the green line, and then relatively higher levels of blood urea nitrogen are, are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, and I presented this data in my last video, so if you missed that, uh, check it out. So when considering those data and the positive correlation for red blood cells being uh, significantly correlated with higher blood urea nitrogen, this is also going in the wrong direction. So we'll put it another red arrow there. All right, so next on the list is albumin. So uh, albumin levels uh, for men and women decline during aging. They're relatively high in youth and then decline during aging. And then in terms of all-cause mortality risk, we're looking at data here on the right for 85 to 99-year-olds, 100 to 104-year-olds, and older than 105. And then the HR is the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality. The 95% confidence interval gives you the range where the uh, risk, uh, risk values uh, are present. And what we can see is that for relatively higher levels of albumin, significantly lower all-cause mortality risk was identified for each of these three age groups. And also, interestingly, note that for the other biomarkers that are uh, in these, uh, on, this, on the list, HDL, LDL, HbA1c, creatinine, uh, kidney function by EGFR but using creatinine, and C-reactive protein, uh, albumin is the only one, or albumin, the, the magnitude of the uh, all-cause mortality risk reduction is greatest for albumin when compared with these other biomarkers. So when considering the data for albumin, we can then, uh, and when considering that uh, higher red blood cells are correlated with higher albumin, which is going in the right direction, we can change that uh, black arrow to now a green arrow. So we've got one going in the right direction for the correlation for red blood cells with albumin. All right, so I'm going to skip past the AST and ALT and LDL for now. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, so what about neutrophils? Higher red blood cells are correlated with higher neutrophils. Is that going in the right direction or wrong? So neutrophils increase during aging. So the uh, green line is the data for men, and we can see that there. They increase uh, during aging. And in terms of all-cause mortality risk, that's what's shown here on the right. So when starting with the referent, which was two to 3,000 neutrophils per microliter of blood, which is where most of my data usually lies, we can see that higher levels of neutrophils going from uh, 3,000 past 7,000 neutrophils per microliter uh, is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So we don't want to have more neutrophils. Uh, that's uh, as they increase during aging and are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So when considering its correlation with red blood cells, higher neutrophils correlated with higher red blood cells, that also is going in the wrong direction. So another red arrow. All right, monocytes have a similar story. Monocytes increase during aging, and then when looking at the all-cause mortality data split into cardiovascular disease mortality, CVD mortality, and non-cardiovascular disease mortality, 
when compared with monocytes of about 400 per microliter, relatively higher monocytes are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk as shown there. So this too is going in the wrong direction, so another red arrow. How about the percentage of lymphocytes? So here in this case, we see a negative correlation, which means higher red blood cells are correlated with a lower percentage of lymphocytes. So lymphocy that lymphocyte percentage declines during aging, which is shown here. So you can see that in youth, there's a relatively higher lymphocyte percentage and then relatively lower lymphocyte percentages in uh, advanced age. Now, there isn't any all-cause mortality data. I've yet to come across a study that looked at the uh, percentage of lymphocytes and its association with all-cause mortality risk. So if anybody's uh, come across that data, please leave a comment and, and share. So when considering that lymphocyte percentage of lymphocytes declines during aging, this too is going in the wrong direction as higher red blood cells are correlated with lower a lower lymphocyte percentage. All right, so in my last video, using a similar analysis of biomarkers versus biomarkers, I presented uh, these correlations for platelets showing that having relatively higher platelets within my 200 to 300 range is correlated with more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. So I don't want to have relatively higher levels of platelets based on that data. So when considering that higher red blood cells are correlated with higher platelets, that red arrow is there because it's going in the wrong direction. Similarly, in an earlier study, I used a, uh, the same analysis to uh, evaluate LDL, and I'll link to that in the uh, right corner if you're interested in that data. But for me, LDL at the, at the lower end of my range is correlated with more biomarkers going in the right direction than wrong. So because of the uh, positive correlation for red blood cells, meaning higher red blood cells is correlated with higher LDL, that too is going in the wrong direction. So without looking at the last three biomarkers of the 11 significant biomarkers that were correlated with uh, red blood cells, uh, MCV and then AST and ALT, uh, higher red blood cells are significantly correlated with seven of the 11 biomarkers going in the wrong direction. So if you remember the scenario, the three scenarios, this suggests that red blood cells toward the, towards the high end of my range, 5.1, may not be optimal. Now, going forward, I'll modify my diet, and what exactly that I'll modify is, will be the topic of another future video, and I can't say when because I want to collect more data and uh, get the data there first before presenting how I did it. But going forward, I'll modify my diet with the group goal of reducing my red blood cells from their current about 5.1 average to within the 4.6 to 4.85 range, so a little bit below my average over the past 13 years. Now, based on the aging data for red blood cells, I could have assumed that my recent red blood cell data was optimal, and I would have missed that the biomarker versus other biomarker approach suggests that they're too high. And uh, I, I expect that this approach can provide greater specificity for what's optimal for blood biomarkers rather than solely relying on published studies and the reference range. All right, if you have questions and comments, uh, to, I'm going to do something different on this channel, and let's have an uh, Ask Me Anything AMA. So tomorrow at 12 p.m., uh, Sunday, December 12, 2021, uh, if you're interested, uh, come to my channel, and uh, let's run through all of this and any other questions that uh, you might have. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, come join us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy the video. Have a great day.